My dear friend and someone I love very much is in a lot of pain right now. They're struggling to forgive themselves for things of the past. It's really got me feeling bad and, and my heart is heavy for them, for this person. You know, I wish that there was something, you know, I could do or say. You know, I know so much of the guilt that's on this person's mind is, you know, it can only be removed or alleviated through forgiveness. And I know that's something this person is struggling with and uh, forgive, get forgiving for something in the past is not easy but it's it's it gets me thinking and it when you have someone you love that you care about and you see them in pain and then you you feel it and you get that lump in your throat for that person or anyone you love and that's when you know you're in uh you're experiencing true compassion when you could feel another person's pain I'm definitely feeling that, and I feel that for anyone when you know they're in, in pain and they're suffering and they're at a point when they're trying to uh, get out of it. And uh, compassion is, by the way, a word in the offering. It is a vertical word with a great correspondence of H11. But you don't always feel compassion for someone when when they're in pain but they're not ready to climb out of it that's my experience so when somebody is hurting themselves or they're in the middle of it but they're really not ready to to climb out of it and they're just complaining about it yeah I, I tend not to feel that way i say well let them go through it they're just not ready but when someone is ready or you really feel it that's when i i get that i want to help i want to help any way i can and, you know, I, sometimes you can't help. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. And sometimes the lesson is just back on you. Sometimes it's just back on me. I just need to feel that compassion and feel that pain. Maybe they're teaching me something. I don't know. I'm actually just trying to work this through with you now. Uh, I want to talk about this. And I just want to work it, work this through because I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just know that I'm feeling horrible for someone and I have a feeling they don't know how to get out, but they want out. You know, when you don't when you don't forgive someone, it's because you you you're holding blame. Forgiveness is a word in the offering. It's a very important word, and that too is a, a vertical word. W nine. It's center to the right. Uh, forgiveness. You know, forgiveness is the gateway to happiness. If you, if you can't forgive yourself, well, the opposite of guilt is happiness. So if you're feeling guilty, you're giving up your happiness. So any guilt you have, that means you have to forfeit happiness. And happiness is another word in the offering. And it's a horizontal word with a grid correspondence of 19B. And that's just, you know, below the midline, center to the right a little bit. And that intersects with generosity and wealth. So what I do when I'm looking at, at at any problem in life now, I go right to the offering. And I go to the offering and I say, I want my truth. I want truth. I, and I pray for truth. And truth is a word in the offering. And that is a, uh, a vertical word. S21. And how do I get there? And how do I get the answers? And, and even now, talking to you, this is a form of prayer. For me, it's a form of prayer. Prayer is another word. It's a vertical word. L1, L1, it's uh, at the top, centered left at the top. It's a vertical word. So when I have, I'm looking for answers, like what, what's, what's forgiveness about? I'm just looking for answers. My friend's in pain. I feel their pain. You know when I know? I feel it because I get that lump in my throat. And I get that real heavy feeling in my throat. And it's humbling. Humility. Humility is a word in the offering too, by the way. It's a... It's a horizontal word, 25S, and that, that intersects with truth. And that's what I'm looking for, truth. I'm looking for truth. How can I maybe help my friend? How can I say something to help this person? If they're at that gate and they're trying to get it unlocked and they're trying to, on the other side of the gate is freedom 
and happiness. Freedom's a word in the offering. It's a vertical word. And uh, that has a grid correspondence of 07. Most people want happiness. Most people want freedom. But if you're feeling guilty, and we all do, we all feel guilty. We all make mistakes. And guilt, it's a block. It's an energy block to the other side. And you have to say, well, how is this? You know, am I supposed to stay on this side of the fence in pain and suffering and give up my happiness? Get, when, you, when you're feeling guilty and uh, you, can, you give up your happiness, well, then you give it all up. You, when you give that up, you give up, you give up your creativity. It's a word, horizontal word. 21k you give up your creativity you you give up your love even you don't love yourself enough you don't love the other person enough you give up love and how do i know that because the opposite of love is you know is hate or darkness so this person's feeling it i think they're at the gate and they're looking for a way out and when i know they're looking for a way out and they're in pain that's when i pick up that pain i'm feeling it and i'm saying how can I work through this right now to maybe figure out a way to a better way to say it that I can help them where it gives them the combination to find their way on the other side. And I think in life, no matter what, you know, forgiveness is the key. It's the key that's, that's going to unlock that, that gate. Forgiveness for me, I know I have to forgive myself every day. It's an everyday process because I make mistakes every day. I realize there is me here in the flesh. I have the ego. I have my carnal desires. I, I have these things I think about that I want to feed my ego every day. And I'm neglecting maybe the more important aspects of my spiritual growth and even the bigger picture in other people. And I put myself first over the others. It's just what's best for Michael Brand. And I'm not thinking of everyone else. And when I'm doing that, I catch myself and then I, I need to um, forgive myself for that because I realize that if I'm only looking to serve myself, then I will be all alone. I will be all alone because, and that will be a great deal of discomfort. So what I do is I pray, and this is a form of prayer. I'm asking for truth. I'm asking for truth, and I want a better way to say this. So for my friend, I would say, if you are in a state of guilt or shame or blame, there's no future. And that's just a matter of fact. Without a future, and you, you're holding yourself in that position for no, for no reason, but without a future, you cannot have uh, any great, wonderful experience in life. You cannot ever achieve the happiness and wealth. And uh, you won't smile. That's a word in the offering. Horizontal word, 25A. And you will keep your heart in bondage. You will, you're you holding on to an emotion that doesn't serve you. And it's not who you are. And the biggest thing to understand is that whatever you do in your life, I don't care who you are or even what someone else does to you, it's it was just their, their ego. It was just their flesh. And the ego that serves that flesh, it's just that individual who was not connected to their source or not balanced to their true source. They weren't well, actually not in harmony. Harmony is a word. That's a horizontal word. 8M. They were not in harmony. So it's okay to be out of harmony with things and out of balance at times. But it's not who they really are. And we know that anyway, because, you know, we've all known someone who's passed away. The only thing that really goes is that, well, obviously their, their flesh dies, but that personality and, you know, whatever the quirks they had and whatever they did wrong, only the ego could keep those past transgressions alive. Only an ego mind, someone living in an ego state of mind can keep the transgressions of a deceased person can they can keep those alive only in the ego mind because in reality when that person dies the only things that carry on to eternity are their good deeds eternal is a word in the offering and i know this because eternal is a word it's a horizontal word 
ten o. So the things that live on are our good deeds, our good thoughts. And eternal happens to intersect with the word freedom. Freedom's a vertical word. O seven. So for me, the forgiveness piece, how to how to understand forgiveness is to understand the bigger picture of this whole experience and understanding that we are the flesh and the spirit and the soul, right? You're you're more than just just your ego or just who you think you are, your persona, your job, your family, whatever. There is something greater. There's a life force that was in you before you were born and it's with you after. And I do believe your soul, our soul and our flesh come together to experience things. So forget my take on forgiveness or how I look at it. I would suggest, based on the offering, anyone is looking to have a better understanding of forgiveness, they could find it themselves through prayer. And that's asking. And But you, before that, you have to... You have to do a few things uh, on this quest for forgiveness. And the first thing you, you need to do, in my opinion, is to surrender. And surrender is a, a word, a horizontal word. It's at the bottom. It's the, it's, it, to me, is the, the foundation for the offering. It sets at the bottom a horizontal word, 26H. And everything rests upon surrender. And surrender is when you surrender your ego to a higher power, to your creator, to God, and you set aside your your ego mind, the Michael Brand, if you will. Oh, I know this, I know that. I'm Michael Brand, or I'm Bob Jones, or whatever. So it starts with surrender, in my opinion. You have to get that ego out of the way, and then you have to get all the thoughts associated with your ego in the past. You need to set all that aside, and you try to get on a clean slate and. You have to say, is that your intention? And intention is a word, and that's a very important word because, uh, and it's a horizontal word in the offering, uh, 2W, intention. It's in the upper right hand corner. So you surrender with the intention of finding truth. But all three of those are words. You surrender, and that is your intention, is to find the truth. And you're going to do that. Through prayer, and in that prayer, you're going to ask, "How do I forgive myself? How do I forgive others? How do I understand forgiveness, and how can I use it in my life?" And prayer is asking, and when you surrender, that's what you're doing. You're, you're getting whatever thinking got you in this mess. You're basically saying, "All right, I'm not using that anymore." You get that out of the way, and you surrender, and you start asking. And how do you ask God, your creator? Number one, you, you, you could just start asking. And you know what I think about uh, with regard to prayer is they say, oh, knock. Uh, how does it go? Who cares? They say knock, uh, seek. Oh, my brain isn't working. But if you, if you think about knocking on a door, how many times does does the darkness or evil or bad news knock on your door? I mean, I know for me, it's knocking nonstop. The news is knocking at knocking at my door. Hey, turn me on. Look at this. Worry about this. Maybe uh, desires, maybe temptations and and addictions. Go oh, get another coffee. Load it up with sugar. Uh, you know, cut that person off online and say something. Use some gossip and talk and and. It's nonstop all day long. Let's just call it evil. It's knocking all day long. All day long it's knocking on your door. And that's why at the end of the day most people are exhausted. I have no energy. Because all day long someone's trying to get in and to contaminate your mind. And the op opposite of contamination is pure. Pure is a word. It's a vertical word in the offering. L23. The bottom, center, left. It's actually... <laughs> It actually intersects with surrender. So you're looking for pure truth. Pure is a word. Truth is a word. You're surrendering. That's your intention. And you have to ask. You have to ask. And you're, what are you asking about? How do I forgive myself? How do I forgive others? How do I get to understand it? And if you ask, but you have to knock on God's door, 
How many times during a day do you surrender? Probably very few, maybe never. How many times a day are you surrendering to God and saying, wait a minute, I need your help. I need your guidance. You know, the other side is knocking all day long, all day long. It starts first thing in the morning, knocking and trying to take your time and your energy and and trying to get in. And even those ill hearted feelings you may have for someone else or yourself that's that's just again the evil darkness knocking on your door trying to keep you from growing and realizing the beauty within you and discovering your perfection you know if god created everything if god created everything the good the bad and the evil he created everything and we don't understand it all we don't understand even a piece of it well he must know more than we do he has a plan God, God has a plan. I say he, obviously I'm not talking about a gender, but he has a plan that uh, is beautiful and magnificent. And only the ego, only the flesh would say, no, it's not, it's not perfect. It's not this, it's not that. Perfection is a word. It's a horizontal word that intersects with beauty, actually. So I know this to be true because it's, for me, it's in the offering. So it's a horizontal word. For R, perfection, and intersects with beauty, vertical word S3. I believe, and I've said this in another, another talk under purpose, our whole job here is to discover the beauty within and the perfection within us. And it is there. And the only thing that's shielding it or hiding it or keeping it from emerging is, is our ego, this dark, this, well, you want to call it your shadow side or you want to call it darkness or evil or you want to call it just the carnal mind the flesh well you're out of harmony you're out of balance or you just lack understanding because you know for many many years people have been telling you you're not beautiful you're not perfect so why would you believe it so if you if your intention is to find your pure truth you surrender you pray and you ask for forgiveness and it'll come because god will give it to you this is in the offering. It's all very clear. It's, it's all very clear. And if, if you are looking for eternal freedom, then you are going to forgive yourself eternally. You're going to still make mistakes, but the key is, okay, I made a mistake. But that's where you go back to learn and teach. So you learn something, you're teaching something, you're experiencing something, but you need to, you need to knock on God's door and say, hey, I need, I need help. All your problems were created from your mind now your current mind those were all created from faulty thinking mostly faulty paradigms that you inherited or were taught from our society our families our cultures and most of the time it's to keep you in control or to control you or to get something out of you to get money to gain power over you Um, life is not easy here in the flesh and we have to survive and we we often need other people and their energy to do it so if we can keep them in bondage somehow through making them feel guilty making them feel bad then we can get them to to do many things for us or bigger the biggest thing is fear we keep them in fear you know a lot of people just fear the unknown they'll hang on to what's familiar with them to them it's easier to to it's easier to hang on to what's familiar because you understand it and if you understand it then that equates to safety because you know the boundaries of it we don't really understand eternity to its fullest extent we really don't we don't understand it something without a beginning or an end so that's why we like a comfort zone because we we, it usually is it's within an envelope and even if it's a horrible envelope but you're familiar familiar with it you're going to stay there because you know you don't know what's outside of that envelope. And outside of your envelope of fear is perfection and beauty and power and love and joy and peace. Love is a word. Joy is a word. Peace is a word. And you can only get there through fearless and fearless is a word. But if you're in fear, forget everything else. You're not going to have it. You're not going to have it. So you need to jump out of your envelope or you stay where you are and embrace that pain and suffering. Embrace is a word. It's a vertical word. 
E19. And the reason you embrace it is because maybe you're not done feeling all that pain and shame and guilt because you haven't fully learned your lesson. Learn being a word. And that's fine. That's fine. Some people haven't fully learned their lesson or experienced it long enough. And they're not done. How long an acorn lays below the soil before it says, I've had enough. I need the light. It's time to burst out of my shell. Well, maybe you're not ready. And that's fine. But at least if you can bring your, your awareness is a word in the offering. It's a, it's a horizontal word, 22B. It actually intersects with embrace. If you can bring your awareness to that fact, where you can say, okay, at least I understand how this works and I choose to stay here. Well, number one, if you choose to stay there, you can leave everyone else out of it. So you're not bringing them in. You're not saying, oh, help me, help me, help me, when in reality you don't want to help yourself. Or you need to just stay there a little longer and get ready to bust out. That's fine. Maybe you need more time. But make that choice, own that choice. And at least that's the truth. And you're looking for pure truth. Pure, pure is a word. Truth is a word. So if you want pure truth, that's the fact. Then just embrace where you are and say, I'm here. And yeah, I might complain, but I'm not ready yet to change. Okay, well, you now you have that awareness. Awareness is a word. 22B. So at least be honest if, that, if that's where you are. But if you want to get out and you said, no, I've, I, I, my awareness is telling me I'm ready for love. Love was the first word in the offering. It's a horizontal word. 6E it was the first word that started this whole thing. And you could find that on a on my um about the offering. But a podcast on that. But love was the first word. And all of this came from love. So if you want to know what love is, love is all of the other fifty two words. That's love. And if you want to know the opposite of that, you would go to the opposite of these words. So what's the opposite of fearless? Well, being in fear. What's the opposite of, of uh, you know, awareness? Well, you want to be ignorant? Then be ignorant. Uh, or if you don't want to learn, then you would be ignorant. Excuse me. You, you would, you would um, you know, you would be, be ignorant if you don't want to learn. But if you're looking for the truth and you're looking for, for happiness and you're looking to grow, well, then you're going to surrender your old mind. You're just going to surrender that old mind. You're going to pray to God. And you're going to knock on God's door and just say, hey, help me out. I'm ready. And that's my intention. And you do that with your heart. Heart is a word. It's a horizontal word, M8. It's up on the right, upper right side, heart. It intersects with faith and it intersects with infinite, infinite, infinity, your truth, your infinite. You're looking to connect with infinite beauty and perfection that you are. You are infinitely beautiful and that you need to learn so this is what how i'm how i'm seeing this right now this is how i'm seeing it so forgiveness is is a the best way to to understand forgiveness is to number one ask for the help but then just start to say okay well why would i hang on to something who am i helping and who am i hurting by holding a grudge you know, think about this. If you don't forgive someone else and they do something wrong and you don't forgive them, how does that possibly help you and hurt them? Especially if they forgot about it. How many times you, you're angry and you're holding a grudge up for someone and you say, oh, I'm never going to forgive them for what they did. But that other person totally forgot and they're living their life. <laughs> Who's the winner there? I mean, think about that. That's why they say forgiveness is a selfish act. Now, if you also, you make a mistake, it doesn't even make sense to hold yourself in a state of mind of guilt, that energy field, unless you just need more time to feel, feel bad, but at least understand the truth of that whole process. And if that's the case, then just be honest and say, okay, I'm not done feeling horrible. I'm not done. I'm going to stay in this state of mind. But leave everyone else out of it. That's my opinion. But if you really want health and happiness, health is a word. Health is a uh, vertical word. M8, health, wealth, P14, happiness, 19P. You want to learn 
that's a vertical word you want to learn v3 about the beauty that is you you are beautiful s3 and the perfection within you 4r but you know what you're not going to find any of the peace peace is a word the third word actually was the third word the first three words were love joy and peace love was the first word joy was the second word joy is a vertical word in the offering f5 and peace is a a vertical word h5 if you want love joy and peace you have to knock on god's door and ask for it you have to ask for it and you will find your peace there you have to if that's your intention and then that's where you're you that's in your heart that's your truth that's your truth and that you in your heart you want that the heart is your emotion and you have faith in god you have faith in eternity eternal is a word you have faith and you know something created you something some something greater than all of us so use the offering to find it i just scratch the surface um, but what probably the biggest thing i would say to my friend is you know surrender that old way of thinking and ask god for help ask god for forgiveness because god will forgive you you have to ask for forgiveness from god and you have to ask for it for yourself and actually um you'll know when you get it I, I, and i left this out i forgot about this but it's another word in the offering it's a horizontal word grace 19a when you ask god for forgiveness and you're feeling horrible and you've got that lump in your throat and you're just asking and praying and you're hoping hope is a word and you have faith hope hope is another word um q7 and you'll know because you will be gifted with grace from god grace 19a and you will feel the peace right then and there from god and you will feel that inner peace and joy and you will know that you're in god's arms and he's bringing you back home through these lessons he's bring god is bringing you back home every day through the lessons of life and that's why we're here to learn we're here to teach and if you didn't have the pain you wouldn't appreciate any of this and and really this whole life process is all about learning through contrast you know if you want to really know what love is and what love feels like you have to understand hate if you want to understand the concept of abundant abundance you have to live through scarcity only as long not forever by the way you only have to experience it how long it takes you to learn that lesson well that's up to you that's up to your level of awareness so if you want laughter in your life laughter is a word but to really to have laughter you have to understand the sadness first so that's how we come back home it's no different than taking a vacation or or going on a trip you're going you're going to leave home you're going to go away you're going to do all these things and you're going to come back you're going to you're always going to wind up back home whether your journey was good or bad some people's journey in life you may leave and you, your journey and your vacation is a bad one or maybe here i probably not the best example i'm giving but you're always going to come back home and god's going to bring you home but he's going to bring you home with wisdom he's going to bring you home after he taught you everything you wanted to learn and experience and that's a privilege and an honor honor is a word honor is a word another word horizontal word 15b it's an honor to go through this experience and be part of this and you can really change the way you look at anything if you go to my uh, podcast on freedom i really talk about the power of our thoughts and how you want to look at things in your attitude and um so to sum up this forgiveness talk it's forgiveness is an inward journey by the way i'll say if you you really never have to forgive anyone outwardly you never have to forgive a single person in your life and you say oh what are you talking about all you have to do is forgive yourself continually and if you forgive yourself unconditionally but in order to do that though true forgiveness requires the learn the learning part you do need to learn that lesson 
So, you know, you can't just say, oh, I forgive myself and you didn't get anything out of it. No, you need to learn that lesson and you need to feel uh, that compassion for yourself. You, you can get that lump in your throat when you did something wrong and even you're feeling bad. You're, you can have compassion for yourself. But once you learn the lesson, forgiveness will, will be given. It's actually a natural occurrence and you'll feel that. But so if you do that, you never have to, to forgive anyone else because you'll be in a constant state of perpetual forgiveness. Nobody's going to offend you because you're going to realize they're just an extension of you. We're all connected. Well, we're all one. There is no them and, and us. I mean, we are all together. So this whole thing is an inward journey. This whole life experience is an inward journey. And, you know, people have said it. It's all, oh, be the change you want to be. You know, you hear it. Spiritual teachers say it. It's true, though. It really is. It's true. You'll get there. You'll get there. And you find your peace. And you ask for it. And you be patient. Be patient's a word. Patient is, patience, patience is, and embrace the word embrace. To me, I take that as living in the moment. Like that's how I, those two words, embrace is, is a word. I told you it's a vertical word. It's on the left, the left, uh, lower left corner. Embrace, E19 and patience is a uh, horizontal word, 5-H, and patience and embrace. For me, those words just mean be in the moment, be in the moment. Because if you're patient, you're just saying, you're just living in that moment, in the moment, in the only thing you have, the moment. And when you embrace, you embrace that moment. So there's a lot of teachings in here that also talk, that you hear people say, oh, live in a moment, breathe. Well, to me, you know, that's, you get that right there with those two words. And that gives you your freedom and that gives you health because, you know, you'll be healthy when you're not wearing health is a word, vertical word in the middle. M8, you'll be healthy when you're not worrying about the past and tomorrow. And that ties back to forgiveness. And that's why all these words connect because you, you know, forgiveness is, 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 is when you don't forgive yourself, it's a form of mental illness in a way. You're, you're, you're ill in the mind. Your thinking is flawed and you can't be healthy. You can't be healthy if you're thinking about the past or in the future that someone did something or you did something because you need to move on. Life is moving. Life is always in action. It's always in movement. Act is a word. Act. 5-8. It's on the left hand horizontal word. 5-8. It's in the left, upper left hand corner. Action. Life is action. It's movement. Things are always moving like energy. It's the energy, like the energy of your heart. It's meant to move. And when it's not moved, there's a blockage. And when there's a blockage, there's, you're out of balance. And when you're out of balance, you're, you're out of harmony. Harmony is a word, a horizontal word. You're out of harmony. So you, you start to see all these words tie together and they all tie together to teach you a lesson and, and to, but you have to contemplate on them and think about them and do it in a way that you're, you, after, after you do that, after you've tossed aside all the garbage you've learned over the years and, you know, keep always the good stuff. Of course, all the, the better part of you, you're going to keep the love, the kindness that's in your heart and all that, but all the other junk, get rid of it. And start focusing on the offering and these words and how you can benefit and how you can grow. And by that, by extension, humanity will benefit. And then that's called cooperation. That's a word in the offering. It's a horizontal word, 12F. So when you get to that place, now you're in total cooperation. And tolerance is a word. And, and it intersects with teach. And tolerance is a vertical word uh, that has C5. But the reason that's important is because you have to tolerate yourself. And remember, I said this is an inward journey. You have to tolerate the fact that we're here to learn and balance the flesh and the, the ego and the, and the mind with the spirit. Be able to uh, use our senses to find the beauty in life and the perfection. And that's why the word temperance is so important. Temperance is another word. And the offering is a horizontal word. 17v the reason temperance is important is because if you want to get the pure beauty of life pure word beauty and the perfection and you can't do that if you if 
we fill our minds and body with contaminated materials or contaminated food or contaminated thoughts. And when you have guilt, that's a contamination. Guilt is contamination. Poor food or excesses in in addictions and you have no control because you're because you're fearful maybe you're full of fear and you, you're trying to get through something so you, you 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 know maybe you go to drugs or alcohol or the internet or other things and you give up all your creativity for that you give up your creativity you give up your laughter you no longer dream dreams a word horizontal word 23 double a it's on the lower right corner you know just go through the words and you say okay and then you say uh another word is um another word is loyalty you want to be loyal to yourself you want to be loyal to god and and you have to be kind to yourself kindness is a word it's a horizontal word you got to be kind to yourself you got to be loyal to yourself go through all the words right do you want humor in your life well you're going to find it with the other 52 words humor is a a vertical word, B15. Well, if you want humor, you got to look for the other words. You say, well, my, you know, gratitude's a word. Are you grateful? Gratitude's a vertical word. Y6. Are you happy and grateful? Are you grateful for this experience? Do you honor this process? Honor's a word. You got to honor. Honor this experience. There's no, there's no other person on the planet but you. That's like you. You're the only one. So you are 100% unique. There's only one one of you. There's only one of me. You know, you have this mind and the ability to think about anything the way you want to think about it. You can take something good and think about it in a bad way. And you could take something bad and think about it in a good way. All with your mind. So that's power of choice. But, you know, you need the awareness to do that. Awareness is a word. But once you're aware of that, your power, your power is within your choice. Then you can say, wait a minute, I can forgive myself? Yes, you can. You can forgive yourself. So, I love my dear friend. And may love and joy and peace and hope and health and wealth and happiness fill their heart. Thank you. Just a day ago